Hey, good morning guys. It's Jeffrey House Carpet Cleaning here and it's a beautiful autumn day here in uh, Port Southeast Portland, Oregon area. We're going to go inside into this duplex to get out of the, the water for now. Probably going to be a lot of going back and forth, you know, just to run the lines in and everything. But we are going to be performing our truck mounted steam cleaning here. And let's just walk this real quick so you're seeing it as I'm going through. So it looks like a family room area, living room. Um, doesn't look really soiled. I don't see spots anywhere. However, we are going to um, pre-vacuum it to get all the debris or as much debris out as possible. Um, according to ICRC standards, every job should be pre-vacuumed in a vacuum typically pulls up about close to 80% of all the debris in there. However, um, we do a little bit more vigorous um, vacuuming with a little bit stronger vacuum than what most companies or people, homeowners and all that actually use. Um, with a Kirby, um, I guesstimate that, you know, based upon amounts of debris that's collected in the bag and, uh, debris that's collected in the filter basket outside in our truck and everything that we are actually able to get out about 85 closer to 85 to 90 percent of the debris that's actually in the carpeting um so all the loose soils that are in the carpeting actually come out with a a, a good vacuum however when you're dealing with residues and things like that those will hold on to uh debris and dirt and dander and stuff because it's it's sticky and those will stick to the carpet like velcro and no amount of vacuuming will actually pull those out that's where your uh your pre-spray solutions and and carpet conditioners and those things go down on the carpets um it's best to use some form of agitation in here i probably will do a crb possibly just because it's this is going to be a flat open space and there isn't a bunch of moving and going up and down stairs, which absolutely slows the entire cleaning process down big time. Um, so what that does is that uh, that breaks up those those residues and things in the carpeting that are actually holding the soils in that would not come loose with a vacuum. So it breaks those loose, and then when we run our uh, powerful truck-mounted steam cleaning, the rest of it just kind of you know, just slides right off the carpeting and we pick it up into our waste tank. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So we got a living room, we've got a bedroom with a closet. <sighs> I suppose you could call this a hallway. It's more like a, a segue into the bedroom areas. And then we have a second bedroom here. So it's pretty much an apartment style duplex that we're working in today. Um, very straightforward. We'll go ahead, we'll give it a super pre-vacuum and then we will, um, we are going to douse this really good. I think just one gallon of, or I'm sorry, one unit of our uh, encapsulation solution, which is a peroxide based sodium carbonate. Um, that should be more than sufficient for this this entire space um, to get it on there pretty generously to work it in and agitate and give it sufficient dwell time and the carpet should be brand new and looking awesome and ready to go any stains any odors any of that will be completely eliminated I don't see I did a quick look around I didn't see any uh what you, you find in a lot of apartment sort of scenarios is red red food spills or red dye from like Gatorade or whatever spilled all over the place. Um, the red dyes generally do not come out with just a typical uh, pre-spray and a steam cleaning. You actually have to use a red stain remover. So that's why um, red stains are notorious in apartments because cheap carpet cleaning does not um, invest in pulling red stains out. They just get in and out. Unless they're working with a decent apartment management crew that is actually paying them to pull the red stains out. But most of them, I shouldn't say most of them, but the cheaper ones only 
want the carpets to get wet for the next tenants to come in and they don't necessarily care about the quality of the work as much. They just want cheap, cheap, cheap. So um, with that said, a lot of customers only want cheap, cheap, cheap. So um, we are not going to do that here. We are actually going to do a very high quality carpet cleaning job today and I'm rambling on and on about carpet cleaning because uh, I'm wanting the YouTube bots to um, transcribe this video into text and to have a lot of content regarding carpet cleaning and carpet cleaning buzzwords to index and to put into their system to make Howell's carpet cleaning more visible out on the internet. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and begin our super pre-vacuum, which is our phase one of our five-phase cleaning process. Okay, one thing I forgot to point out is that whenever I come into a vacant unit where the owner has left a key to come in, I always leave the key right there on the counter because if I don't, I'm no myself I'm gonna misplace it um, I have walked out and I've dropped keys out in the middle of the street and luckily I don't know how I found them again but I would have been SOL if I hadn't found them so uh, very important <laughs> you guys keep the your important stuff somewhere and do things by routine so that you uh, get in the habit of doing certain things and keeping things I mean yeah, I'm probably going to go over that with packing the truck too. I mean, I repack my truck the exact same way for years. And so um, I v can visualize where every piece of equipment is. I can go from the inside the house. I can tell someone to run outside and go into this box, orange box, and go grab my the vacuum cleaner out or, you know, whatever. So that really helps to save time just to be orderly and know exactly where everything is plus it makes you appear to be more professional if you're not like fumbling around looking for stuff all right so we've just finished up with our pre-vacuum and when we we first came in here the carpets looked pretty good um there was a little bit of debris that obviously the previous cleaning the vacuum cleaner wasn't strong enough to pick up especially along baseboards one thing about the kirby is it does have the uh airflow and suction to pretty much pick up everything along the baseboards it does a really good job at doing that um but wasn't quite expecting this see the bag is filled up to about to here that's about 35 percent over the fill line so 135 percent of a packed bag of debris in a Kirby. So um, we were able to pick up a lot of debris out of the carpeting. Um, one thing to note is that carpeting can harbor up to one pound of debris per foot. Um, we didn't quite pick up that much, but I would say we probably picked up a good five pounds of debris or more in that bag. Um, one thing is that debris tends to accumulate in front of the doorways. I mean, that's it kind of pretty much obvious. So we make sure that we vacuum, vacuum, vacuum in probably about two or three different directions in front of doorways and transition areas just to get as much of the dirt out as we possibly can. So our, um, as strong as a powerful truck-mounted steam cleaner is, um, it does face issues when you start turning all that stuff into mud. It doesn't quite have the effect um, as cleanliness and thoroughness as a dry vacuum does. So um, as a tip to the consumer, if you're looking around calling for carpet cleaning, if you're, the carpet cleaning company admits to not performing a pre-vacuum, hang up and call the next carpet cleaning company because a pre-vacuum is a vital, crucial first step of the carpet cleaning process. If this process is not completed, this entire bag is just going to turn to mud. So I might as well just take this and put it into a five gallon bucket of water, mix it up and dump it on your carpet because that's more or less what's happening. 
Um, but with that said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab that. Actually, I don't think I'm going to need the halogen light. It looks like the sun's starting to light up a little bit outside. Even though it's a bit cloudy out, I can see pretty good in here. So I'm going to go grab our pre-sprays and uh, our CRB and begin our next phases two of three, two and three, which includes the application of the pre-spray solution, which is eco-friendly, um, contains zero residual soap residue whatsoever, has very little impact on the environment, if any whatsoever, and it is probably the encapsulation cleaning is probably a lot greener than um, your typical hot water extraction cleaners that are available. Um, just because they go down, they leave soap and they leave residue and they require an acid rinse to pull all that stuff back up out of the carpeting. And it's pulling all that nasty soap residue and stuff out and it's putting it into the water and then the water gets dumped somewhere and it goes back into the creeks and the streams to the ecosystem and it starts drowning water skippers. So I said all that just to say that the encapsulation solution cleaning that I'm doing today is the most green, most eco-friendly, most everything that we can possibly do um, as far as being safe on the environment, um, doing an extremely good cleaning job, neutralizing, sanitizing, and deodorizing all the carpets. We're getting all the filth and stuff out. We are providing the, the most amount of value to the customers we possibly can. Um, because in the carpet cleaning business, we're in the business of prolonging carpets. And if you're leaving that in the carpet, you're not really doing anything, really. You're getting the carpets wet. You're extracting. And with the extraction, an extraction basically is surface to mid-level of the fibers. I mean, really, you're expecting a vacuum to, uh, a truck-mounted vacuum to get all of the debris that is laying down on the backing of your the carpeting. Um, I suppose that if they were thorough enough that they could probably get a large percentage of it out, but I um, believe and earnestly feel that without the pre-vacuum that a lot of it is just being left behind in the carpets. So when your carpets are damp for four to six hours and you're waiting for them to dry, just remember that there's 40 to 60 percent of the mud left in your carpeting in, in the form of dirty water. So that's just food for thought. Okay, moving on to phase two of our cleaning process. What we've got here is a multi sprayer, it's an electric sprayer. And what we got in there is our cleaning solution that we made up. And now we are going to disperse it evenly across all the carpets. You can see it general general flow of uh, pre-spray solution coming out. So we cover all the carpets, and then we after we do that, we move on to phase three. Okay, I wanted to point out this little round spot. It was yellow, yellowish. I didn't know if it if it was urine or not, but um, this is the reason for why a lot of uh, guys miss spots and stains. Is that when you've got something that's deep down on the carpeting. Um, you have absolutely no idea if it's going down padding deep or how deep it's actually going. So it's a real good idea and I'm going to actually apply some more because if I see that much of the spot, that's pretty much the tip of the iceberg. It's probably expanding out maybe a foot around, you know, radius all the way around it. Um, so I'm going to add some more. But what that's doing is that it's allowing our pre-spray to soak in deep into the carpet. Um, this will remain, although we will be able to sh extract most of it, it will remain wet for uh, longer than the rest of the carpeting. But it is deteriorating and breaking apart anything that might be in the carpet there. So this spot is dealt with and annihilated and won't have any other issues. And hopefully there won't be any visual uh discoloration or anything like that associated with it, um, having no clue what it is. Um, there are sometimes uh, 
residual effects that are curbed due to a stain in the nature of it robbing color and stuff from your carpeting which can't be reversed but at least you can um, deal with the problem itself as far as any residue or uh, uh, yeah pretty much residue and things that actually affect the cleanliness of the carpeting so this will be neutralized sanitized and deodorized it shouldn't cause it won't be causing any issues and in a perfect world it'll be 100% gone and you won't be able to see it anymore we are moving on to phase three. I pre-treated the bedrooms in the little Segway hallway there. Um, I like keeping electrical cords and things behind me, so um, we'll rearrange things a little bit just to, to keep in that spirit of making things easy to op operate with. Um, I've tipped this over on its side so that you can see the CRB and what it actually is. As you can see, there are two counter-rotating brushes down there. So when we, gain, when we engage this machine, it is actually, unlike other rotary equipment, it's actually uplifting and grooming the pile of your carpets um, gently. There's no crushing action going on. It's not ripping or tearing and pulling and crushing and, and all that nonsense that some of the other rotary equipments do. But this one will uh, thoroughly agitate that cleaning solution that we just put down in the bedrooms throughout all the carpet fibers. And any sticky residues or dirt or anything that's attached to the carpet fibers will be knocked loose using this uh, CRB machine. This is a soapless cleaning solution and it works very well. It's very green, very eco-friendly. And as you can see, that yellow spot is like gone already just about so i mean you can't even see it except for it looks a little bit white from where we sprayed it and then when we extract it it should come out completely but we are going to agitate this all very well and then um we're going to move into the front room area pre-treat this area here rearranging some of our extension cords probably into the back dining room so that we are keeping all of this stuff behind us so that we can work more easily and then um, once it's all pre-treated we'll agitate it and as it is dwelling and sitting in the carpeting um, we will begin uh, running our hoses and lines in to do a an extraction with the hot water um, at which point all the soil suspension has already occurred all the dirt is loose from the carpets and then the hot water extraction will simply kind of be like the icing on the cake to kind of um i i like the analogy that that uh why is my brain farting on me oh gold coast nick of gold coast flooring use the analogy of washing dishes in the sink and i have used that analogy too because i like it so much um, when you're washing dishes in the sink, you're adding some soap to some water, you're, you're, you've got your, your dirty dishes, you're using an SOS pad, and you're creating some agitation, and that soapy water, warm soapy water, is breaking that food and debris loose from, from, the, uh, from the dishes. And the same is pretty much true with the carpeting. You put down the right solution, and you apply some agitation, and it's breaking all that dirt loose. However, instead of um, turning our faucet on and running water to wash it, you know the the you know wash the dish the dirt off the dishes, we are using our powerful truck-mounted steam cleaning to pretty much vacuum all of that 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 sludge and stuff off of your carpets. So it, they they get perfectly clean. Um, it's very deep, very thorough. Um, of course, we're not leaving any soap residues or anything on the carpets. It's very green and eco-friendly, like I said. And the carpets smell wonderful. They are neutralized, deodorized, and sanitized. And look absolutely awesome. So we are going to continue on with our agitation in the back, back bedrooms there. All right, let's take a look at what the CRB did for us. Um, so soil suspension has occurred... This was the main uh, 
traffic area right here. You can see it's still a little dark, um, but it's it's at least 80% better than what it was. Um, now keep in mind this was only agitation. So um, we're still going to do a truck mounted steam cleaning. Now, um, as I said, this is an encapsulation solution, so the chemistry with this particular product is different than um, what's typically used for hot water extraction. And it's not being soap based for one. And the other thing is what it does is it actually breaks down residues and things that are holding dirt in the carpeting and so that the, the dirt and gunk and everything actually breaks free from the carpet fibers and it uh, coats, coats those uh, those fibers with a, its specific solution so that the the residues and dirt and foreign soils and all that debris that's in the carpets cannot reattach themselves to the carpets. So essentially what that allows you to do is when it's dry you can just vacuum all this nast up the dry vacuum the exact same way we pulled out about five pounds of debris out of this carpeting already so um, this is it's called encapsulation it works very well if done properly um, it's been around probably longer than your your it's been along around a lot longer than your your typical truck mounted steam cleaning however it's kind of been more in the commercial arena and not so much in the residential so that's why people haven't really heard about it and the crb although it's the 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 chemistry and everything is old it's probably it predates hot water extraction by quite a, quite a few years um the, the machinery nowadays is a little bit more innovative and they've got some um, pretty uh, clever ways that you can use and combine um, commercial with your residential cleaning and pretty much do a, take a hybrid approach to a much, what I feel is a much more thorough, thorough cleaning job. So what we did is we suspended all the soils. We're just going to let this dwell here as we are packing things back into our truck and pulling out our lines and hoses and getting the truck set up for some, some hot water extraction, steam cleaning action going on here. So instead of waiting for the carpets to dry 100%, and running a dry vacuum over them. We are gonna do the, take the steam cleaning and just extract it all with hot water. Um, basically does the exact same process. Again, a lot of times I say that the truck is really just for show, because um, people, when you're cleaning carpets, they expect to see lines and hoses run through your house. They expect to see equipment like the, the pre-spray and stuff like that, uh, even though they have absolutely no idea is the concept of to the concept of the uh, the chemistry that's actually taking place. I mean that's for the professional carpet cleaning to know and study and analyze, um, so that they know exactly what's going on and what procedures to take. And that's when I talk about uh, intent and purpose. It's because you've done the study, you know what you're doing, you know why you're doing it, and you do what you do for a purpose and a reason. So the purpose and the reason for us using uh, an, an encapsulation solution and vacuuming and agitation, um, other than the fact that the majority of all those those steps are mandatory by the IICRC, which is the Institute of inspection cleaning and restoration cleaning so if you're not you know following those steps and you're using a bad cheap carpet cleaner you should probably fire him and get somebody who actually knows what they're doing who's certified who's educated who's taken the classes because um, a good carpet cleaner is invested in what he's doing he's studied he's experienced he, he's invested his time in learning how to do this stuff properly and um, that's why an experienced professional is generally more expensive than a uh, Groupon carpet cleaner who has very little or no experience whatsoever. And that's why a lot of them have two out of five star ratings or worse. So, um, yeah. And this equipment, a lot more expensive than a lot of the stuff that they're using. This ain't no rug doctor. This is... Um, Aside from the truck mounted 
cleaning that we do, uh, this is probably about $4,000 of equipment right there that we're using to clean your carpets with. And so what I'm going to do, check these rooms out. They look really good. They're soil suspended. And one thing that's, that is beneficial about the encapsulation cleaning is that if I did leave the carpets like this, I mean, it is an option. It could be done. I mean, I do it for maintenance cleaning all the time. Um, the carpets are pretty much already dry, so they are good to go and ready to be used. However, we do have a bit of uh, time that can be left for drying, and we are going to be a bit more thorough because when you're working in a vacant scenario, um, times like this, this is probably the only time since the last tenant was in here that someone could actually get in here and do a complete thorough cleaning. So that's what we're doing. All right, so this video is verification that we are doing the most thorough job possible. We've got our lines running into the house. We've got our truck fired up and we've got our wand inside. I'm going to let this thing uh, crank a little while and heat up that water and we'll be good to go. Okay, I know it's a little hard to tell from this picture, but uh, what I do, um, CRC recommended, I, I, I CRC recommendations, is that every wet stroke that you perform with the, the wand here, we're using 500 pounds of piping hot water, um, needs to receive two dry passes in order to adequately remove the moisture. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody out there who actually does this by the book and does two passes. Uh, you can see by the tight, I do two passes. I sit on one side, I go across, and I come back and I come around the other way. And you can see that the those patterns on the carpets indicate the tightness and the overlap. Um, the tighter those lines are together indicates more overlap. So the more overlap that's occurring, the more thoroughly, uh, I should say, the more thorough of an, an extraction the uh, carpet cleaning technician is actually doing on your carpet. So, um, again, we're not uh, a quantity versus or quantity over quality. We are definitely quality matters first in our approach to carpet cleaning. And that yellow stain that was here is completely gone, annihilated. So as you can see, as I was saying from the encapsulation, it pretty much breaks all that nasty loose and comes out that traffic area is 90-95% better, better looking than what it was. Encapsulation and agitation. Pre-spray, pre-vacuum, pre-spray agitation and hot water extraction. Chemistry and physics. Chemistry and physics. So, Jeffrey Howells, carpet cleaning out in uh, serving the Southeast Portland area. If you have any carpet cleaning uh, concerns or needs, requirements, feel free to give me a call personally. My direct line is 503-939-0534. Being an owner-operated company, you deal with me only. I maintain all the quality control and I assure you that the customer is always 100% satisfied. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and check out my reviews on Google, Yelp, YP, all those social networking, Facebook, and see those five-star reviews.